Hey everybody, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and today we're gonna look at the software that I use to control my remote observatory from inside my house. The first thing I wanna say is before you watch this video, it is important to understand the hardware side of how this process works, so definitely check out the video up there in the corner to learn more about that process. Secondly, we need to understand how this process works. The problem is there's tons of different things that we need to plug in as astrophotographers, from filter wheels to cameras, to our mounts, to our guide scopes, all these different things. And most of these things plug in via USB. Well, the problem with USB is USB's maximum transmission range is maybe 15 feet any cable longer than that that's USB, and you're gonna to start to run into transmission issues, disconnects, all kinds of things like that. Now, there are things like active USB cables. You can also transition a USB cable into an ethernet cable and then back into USB cable, but all of those come with their own little caveats. So the simplest way to do this is have a dedicated computer that lives in your observatory, and then you're gonna be accessing that computer remotely. Now these computers can come in all different shapes and sizes. Some people prefer to actually have a desktop computer out there in their observatory. Some people like a laptop. So you can actually even buy dedicated observatory computers that are made to clamp to the dovetail bracket on your telescope. So they actually live on the mount. That's a really clean way to do it because then your cable run distances are like six inches. It's a really easy way to connect everything on the mount itself. For me though, what I chose was just to get a small form factor desktop computer, in my case, an Intel NUC. There's a lot of other brands that make these small computers like Lenovo or HP. They have their small workstation computers that are made to mount to the back of a monitor. I'll link a few of those down in the description that I would consider looking at when building something like this. Back to the topic of dedicated Astro computers, I also think those are really sweet. They also have advanced things like sometimes a remote power system, ways to turn on and off different circuits independently, but the price of those goes way up compared to just an HP or Lenovo or Intel uh, desktop machine. So once we have all that set, what we're gonna use is a remote desktop program. So on my laptop, which is plugged into that screen back there, I use a program called AnyDesk. AnyDesk is a competitor to one you might've heard of called TeamViewer. They're both doing essentially the same thing. Um, TeamViewer, you do run into some issues sometimes with them identifying your account as a commercial account or a business account when really you're using it for personal use. I've found that AnyDesk is a little bit less um, particular about what flags you as a business account. And you'll know, sometimes you'll open up TeamViewer and it'll say, your account has been uh, identified as a business account. You need to start paying. And that's not something that I wanna do. So I've had better luck with AnyDesk. However, both programs work great. Now what's really cool about AnyDesk is I can access AnyDesk which is how I access my observatory computer from my phone, my iPad, my computer. So if I'm working out in the observatory, I can have my iPad with me and I'm using my iPad with any desk to access that observatory computer. And so when I'm doing any sort of debugging, I don't have to bring a whole computer out there or a monitor or have a keyboard and a mouse set up out there in the observatory. I'm able to use any desk very easily. Now, before I get in and show you my configuration, the final thing I wanna to touch on is speed. In the past, I've had my observatory wirelessly networked with my house. And that was a great, simple way to do it. In fact, a couple commenters in my last video talking about the hardware mentioned, hey, why not just wirelessly do this? And you totally can. The only thing is, is that your positive experience using AnyDesk, your user experience using one of these remote desktop programs is gonna be directly tied to how fast the network connection to that computer is. So a very fast network connection between the remote computer and the computer or device that you're accessing it with is really a huge deal when it comes to how fast and responsive that experience goes. So for me with that wireless connection, I had lag, I had dropouts, all kinds of things. Whereas now that I have everything hardwired, I'm able to access that observatory computer as if I was sitting right in front of it. And, and that holds true whether I'm in my house or even if I'm accessing this stuff from work or on the go. So now let's take a look at the software side and how this is all configured. So this is what the interface of AnyDesk looks like. And you'll notice that I've actually blurred the top center of my screen. Um, that's because that's where my address is. It's a nine digit code that is uh, unique to this computer. And obviously AnyDesk security is really important. You don't want someone else to have access to your remote desktop, to your computer. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't give that number out, obviously. Um, however, I will also say that's a really important number to write down. Um, each device that installs AnyDesk will have 
have its own address and you're going to want to make sure you have those numbers recorded somewhere. So um, what I did was just made a Word doc on my computer with all my AnyDesk codes for all my different devices. Now one thing that I'm going to recommend for the configuration process here is actually to bring your remote computer, the computer that's going to live inside the observatory, inside uh, and plug it into a keyboard, a mouse, and an external monitor to do this initial configuration. There are some AnyDesk features or uh, configuration options that you actually can't turn on remotely. You have to be actually accessing that computer directly in order to change those. Um, and namely the ones having to do with security. So obviously by default, it's gonna require a username and a password to access your AnyDesk account. However, this is like you know open to the world, meaning anyone who has that number is gonna be able to try to access your computer. So another thing that I recommend doing is changing a couple of preferences. Now, in order to get started with this, we need to install AnyDesk on the different devices that we're gonna use to access our remote computer. And what we need to do is write down their nine digit addresses uh, for each of those devices. So like I mentioned, I use this laptop to access my remote computer, I use my iPad, and I use my phone. So I installed AnyDesk on all three of those computers and I wrote down my nine digit code on all three. Now, once you have that, you're gonna to go to your remote computer and hopefully you actually have local access to it where you have it plugged into a monitor, keyboard and mouse. Go into the settings and inside of settings under security, the best place that I have found to control this is in the access control list. Now, I haven't done this for my laptop because I don't ever have any desk open on this machine, but on my remote computer, I have this checkbox turned on, and then I've added the nine digit IDs of the specific devices that I want to allow to connect to that remote computer manually inside of this list. What this is gonna do is it's gonna prevent any connection from any other AnyDesk ID to that remote computer without changing this preference. Now, obviously that means that if I get a new computer, I'm gonna to need to add the new computer's AnyDesk ID to the allowable list on the remote machine. That can present some problems. Don't do this on a computer that you don't have access to change this list on again. Another thing that I will say is the paid version of AnyDesk allows you to allow a certain user to access your computer. I don't have the paid version. I don't see the need to pay for it. However, that would be an excellent option if I was gonna have my remote machine in a very hard to access location. And if that was the case, I would be able to actually add my user account to this allowed list as well as the individual device ID of the different devices I wanna to use to access my remote machine. A couple of other preferences you may wanna change on the remote machine would be to automatically reboot after a power outage. Um, sometimes your power will fail and you're gonna want that computer to turn itself back on automatically. Additionally, I have auto login turned on as well. So once the computer does reboot, it doesn't boot into the asking for a password screen. It actually boots into the full OS ready to go. Um, and that's super important because that's gonna allow you again to bypass any sort of hiccups in this this whole process of remotely accessing the computer. The only other option you may wanna change on that remote machine is preventing sleep in certain situations and turning on auto updates. That's how I like to run things. So if there's a Windows update on my machine, it will update it automatically, turn itself back on, and it should be good to go. The final thing I wanna mention is being sure that any desk is set to start automatically when the computer boots. This should happen automatically during the installation process of any desk. However, you're gonna to wanna to verify, and again, this is a good thing when you bring that remote machine in and have it in-house on your desk to test, making sure that when you do force a power outage, say hold down the power button and then boot the machine back up, that any desk is starting automatically. Finally, once all of that's set, put your remote machine back out in its location, turn it on, and then when you open any desk on your local device, what you can do is just double click uh, or type in the ID, that nine digit ID of your remote computer, and you'll be able to have full access. So here you can see I'm accessing my remote machine. I can open a web browser. I can open File Explorer on the remote machine. And because I'm local and I have a very fast network connection, it's very easy to run and do all of these things. 
I'll also point out that down in the taskbar down here at the bottom, any desk is running. That is because I need it running in order for this whole process to work. And you all, that's all there is to it. Any desk allows all this to happen. Again, team viewer is going to do the same thing. So if you'd rather use team viewer, you can definitely check that out. There are a myriad of other remote desktop programs. Apple actually has their own. Microsoft has their own as well. Um, I've just had great luck with any desk for using my phone, my iPad, my uh, laptop, any device to access that remote machine. All right, hopefully you found this a useful overview. If you did, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button on the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. I'm trying to put out videos more consistently, but it would be great to have you follow along um, as we learn about how to run a remote observatory in your backyard. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.